This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Kimilia, and this is Kini News. PSM and Muda have called on Zahid to step down as Deputy Prime Minister. This is so that the issue involving his case can be resolved without any conflict of interest. <laughs> Muda and PSM submitted a memorandum to the Attorney General's chambers today calling for a full explanation on their decision to grant Ahmad Zahid Hamidi a discharge not amounting to an acquittal on 47 charges in his Yayasan Akalbudi case. PSM Youth Chief Arvind Kathir Chilvan told reporters that they would hold a protest if their demands are not met within five days. Pihak peguam negara harus memberi penjelasan penuh terhadap keputusan menghentikan proceding ke atas Timbalan Perdana Menteri Zahir Hamidi di Parlimen. Nombor dua, satu garis masa jelas harus diberikan untuk pemisahan Jabatan Peguam Negara dan Pendakwa Raya untuk meminimumkan sebarang percanggahan kepentingan. Nombor tiga, Timbalan Perdana Menteri Zahir Hamidi harus didakwa semula oleh pihak pendakwa raya dan kes ini perlu dijalankan sampai satu penjelasan konkret daripada pihak mahkamah tercapai. He added that they are also calling for Zahid to step down as Deputy Prime Minister until the case is fully resolved. They said this is to ensure transparency and no conflict of interest when he is recharged and brought to trial. Muda Secretary General Amir Haridi Abdul Hadi, who was also at the AGC to submit the memorandum, claimed that there was a conflict of interest since he is the Deputy Prime Minister and the AGC is under the Prime Minister's office. Said Sadiq has told MPs who called on him to give up his seat to look in the mirror. He argued that he wasn't the one who had betrayed the promises made to voters in the 15th general election. Muar MP Said Sadiq Said Abdurrahman has snubbed calls from critics urging him to vacate his seat after he quit the government bloc in parliament. In a live stream last night, the Muda president argued that it was not he who strayed from promises to voters in the 15th general election. He said that Muda and Pakatan Harapan vowed to fight corruption and bring reforms. But the difference between what was promised before the elections and after is astronomical. He cited how AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, whom Harapan vowed to bring to justice for corruption, instead had the charges against him withdrawn. Said Sadiq added that reforms promised by Harapan were now buried. So, if I perlu kosongkan kerusi kerana ingin lawan rasuah, saya cadangkan belilah cermin bagi ahli parlimen ataupun menteri yang katakan perkara tersebut. Beli cermin. Mengapa saya katakan beli cermin? Maksudnya kalian semua perlu kosongkan kerusi juga. Kerana... Sejak bila kamu dipilih untuk gugurkan kes perasuah? Walau kamu lawan dan kamu janji kepada rakyat perkara tersebut, adakah kamu bersedia untuk kosongkan kerusi juga? During GE15, Muda had an electoral pact with Harapan. Critics from Harapan claimed the Muda president was re-elected as a lawmaker because of this pact. The Muar MP exited the government bloc to become a third force in protest of the prosecution withdrawing charges against Zahid in the Yayasan Akalbudi corruption case. Not all government leaders see Sai Sadiq's move as something negative. Ong Kian Ming has welcomed Muda's decision and said that it was a positive move for the unity government. Selangor DAP Treasurer Ong Kian Ming believes that the decision by Muda President Said Sadiq Said Abdurrahman to not align with the government or with the Perikatan National Bloc is a positive move for the government. Firstly, he said with the loss of the two-thirds majority in the Dewan Rakyat after the departure of Said Sadiq, the unity government will no longer be held hostage by one or two individuals for the passage of any constitutional amendments. Ong said this includes the proposed amendments to Part 2 of the Federal Constitution regarding citizenship matters or changing the number of parliamentary seats arising from a delimitation exercise.
Instead, he said the government would have to seek broad-based consensus from all parties within the government as well as the opposition. According to Ong, the government's loss of a two-thirds majority in parliament would also open the door for them to sign a memorandum of understanding with the opposition to support certain bills, such as the Political Financing Act. He said this could be a gesture of good faith, which could result in the opposition no longer making any more calls to replace the government through non-electoral means. He added that it would set the pathway towards more substantive reforms which are supported by both sides. Thirdly, he said Muda's new alignment would stop questions on why Said Sadiq was attacking the government over certain decisions when he was supporting them. He added that with Said Sadiq's decision, DAP would also no longer need to support Muda as it did in Moa, in GE15, and in the Putri Wangsa state seat during the Johor state elections in January 2022. Yesterday, Said Sadiq had quit the government bloc. However, he said he would not join PN. Said Sadiq said he would instead function as a third force and remain supportive of the government's agenda when it comes to voting in the Dewan Rakyat on constitutional and institutional reforms. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose G-Sure. G-Sure is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. Perikata National failed to capitalize on Zahid's DNAA in the recently concluded two by elections. This is according to Kairi, who said that PN was weak in countering the government when it comes to issues not related to the three R. <laughs> Former AMNO leader Kairi Jamaluddin said that Harapan BN can now say that the withdrawal of corruption cases against Ahmad Zahid Hamidi had no effect on voters. This comes following their victory in the recently concluded twin by elections in Johor. In an episode of his Kluwar Skajab podcast last night, Kairi said the winner can write history and say that it's business as usual and had no effect on the voters. Dalam real politik ni, nuansa ni tak penting lah. Sebab pemenang akan dapat segala-galanya. Jadi hari ini tak ada siapa yang akan cerita pasal nuansa undi pakatan, perikatan nasional meningkat, undi pakatan harapan dan barisan nasional merosot dan sebagainya. Sebab yang penting hari ini adalah BNPH ataupun PHBN menang dan mereka akan kata ini adalah kemenangan yang penting sebab menunjukkan bahawa isu DNAA Zahid Hamidi tidak ada kesan langsung. Kairi also agreed with his co-host Shahril Hamdan that PN was weak in countering the DNAA, which could have contributed to Harapan BN's victory. He said PN does not have a lot of goal scorers when it comes to issues that are not related to race, religion and royalty, or 3R. He added that PN had failed to capitalize enough on the issue and should have explained why it is important and about the impact on the future of the country. He said the dust around the DNAA is also bound to settle over time and in three to four years, more and more people will forget about the anger in the matter. Moving on to Amno, the party's Kelantan youth chief has told PN youth to focus on developing Kelantan before they embark on their campaign to save Malaysia. Kelantan Amno Youth has called on Pasir Mas MP Fadli Shari and PN Youth Deputy Chief Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal to focus on developing Kelantan before trying to save Malaysia. This was in response to the Perikata National Youth Chief's announcement yesterday that they are launching a movement called Gerakan Selamatkan Malaysia and plan to hold a protest in Kuala Lumpur this Saturday. In a statement, Kelantan AMNO Youth Chief Muhammad Azmawi Fikri Abdul Ghani described the movement by Fadli and Wan Faisal as a mere attempt to satisfy their political lusts. He told them that their leaders had been given the mandate to govern Kelantan in the recent state election and called on them to stop playing politics and focus on developing the state. He added that if they are not satisfied with what's going on in the country, both of them have been elected into parliament where they could raise the issues. He questioned why they wanted to make the rakyat suffer again. He said before embarking on this campaign to purportedly save Malaysia, they should start with Majukan Kelantan first instead of continuously trying to destabilize the government. 
As Maui also called on the PN leaders to develop a plan to turn Kelantan into an agricultural hub and contribute to the country's food security. He also questioned whether the duo have made any efforts to develop a plan to improve Kelantan's water quality and generate more employment opportunities for the people who have voted for them in the election. Three DAP Central Executive members have called on both friends and foes to stop questioning the party on their stand and struggle. They stressed that DAP was committed to upholding the federal constitution. DAP's commitment to upholding the federal constitution, including Islam as the religion of the federation and the special position of the Malays, should no longer be questioned. This is the message from three of the party's central executive members, Yang Shefura Uthman, Shahrit San Johan, and Sheikh Umar Bagarib Ali to friends and foes alike. In a joint statement, the trio referred to DAP Secretary General Anthony Lok's remarks where he had assured that the party would adopt a moderate approach in implementing policies and political decisions based on the federal constitution. While addressing the concerns of AMNO, whose President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi attended the DAP National Congress yesterday, Lok had stressed that DAP is not a communist, but a center-left party whose struggles and objectives are centered on the federal constitution. The three DAP members said this stand was amplified with the delegates passing a resolution to strengthen DAP's commitment, as mentioned in the Shah Alam Declaration more than a decade ago, to defend the federal constitution. They added that this includes Islam as the religion of the Federation, the special position of the Malays as well as the Orang Asal of Sabah and Sarawak, Bahasa Malaysia as the national language, parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy, and the interests of other races. On the issue of racial composition, which DAP's detractors tend to harp on, the trio said the party represented all Malaysians, including the Malays. They said DAP's struggle is for Malaysia and Malaysians, while the Malays in DAP, like those of other races, play an important role in contributing to the party and serving the people. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.